So once again, good evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I do appreciate it. I know everyone probably has things that might be a little bit more fun to do on a, a Tuesday night, but I'm glad you're all here. Hey, tonight what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. Um, I usually don't spend much time at all talking about too many indicators because i um, I honestly am, am a price action guy, but I get lots and lots of requests um, for a few indicators, and um, one of them is MACD. I probably get more requests about MACD. Um, is everyone sound okay? By the way, NB, the issue that you talked about before, that we chatted about before, has been resolved. Okay, sound is good? Awesome. So, <clears throat> what we want to, um, what I wanted to do tonight is spend a little bit of time with the MACD and kind of demystify it. There's a lot of folks out there that, um, and you see it all over the place. Um, it's one of those indicators that people just praise to the, you know, to the sky that this is the indicator. If you don't know how to use this indicator, you don't know what you're doing in trading. And um, the honest truth is, guys, that that's not the case. But I want to show it to you because it can be helpful for some. And if you do find it helpful, then um, by all means, um, feel free to uh, to use it. Um, I'm just a real limited um, indicator user, and I'll show you why here in uh, just a bit. So there's not many slides here tonight. We're just going to jump right in and get going. Um, and the question that I think um, comes to a lot of people is first what is MACD and and um, do you really need it well I can tell you that you don't have to have it um, you certainly don't need it I used it for years and years and years and I'll tell you what in those years when I used a whole bunch of indicators I made very little money and as a matter of fact I most often um, watch my count d diminish it's when I cleaned up my charts and really got very very simple um, in my trading that I really started making some money and I became a price action um, the guy who studies that price action. But that MACD, if you uh, put enough time and attention into it, can certainly help you. Now, MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. Okay, big fancy word that means we're working with moving averages. Okay, now what is the one thing that's true about a moving average? Everyone should know this. A moving average is a lagging indicator. Okay, the way a moving average works is the price action has to have already passed. And then the price action is plotted on the chart. It has to have already occurred. Okay, so all moving averages, all moving averages are lagging. Okay, so I want to make that very clear right at the beginning. So let me share with you the calculation here for MACD. MACD is kind of, um, a lot of folks don't uh, quite understand how it's put together. Um, the standard MACD settings, by the way, are 12.26.9. Now, what does that mean? Well, the 12 is a 12 exponential moving average. Now, if you don't know what an exponential moving average is, instead of a simple moving average that just goes back 12 days, averages out and puts a plot on the chart, that's a 12 day simple. An exponential moving average actually weights the, the most recent data more than the past data. So it's a little bit more responsive to current price action than a simple moving average is. That's an exponential moving average. So the MACD line is actually found by subtracting the 26 period EMA from the 12th period EMA. So it's just a math equation. We subtract the 12th period and, um, and, and then we come up with what's called the MACD line, okay? And the second line in the calculation or in the MACD indicator is just a nine period exponential moving average. Now there are folks that change those numbers around a little bit, but just keep in mind the first number, the second number, you always subtract the second number from the first and that makes the MACD line. Then the nine is just what they call the signal line. 
not not the single line, the signal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, it's not the single line. <laughs> it's the signal line. Okay, so this is what we look like um, on a standard MACD plot. If you've never seen one, the two moving averages um, are working together. Now the MACD, this green line, I've got this as the MACD line, it is considered bullish when it crosses above the signal line. Okay. Anytime you cross above the signal line or cross below the signal line, that is supposedly supposed to give you a reason to enter trades. Okay. Now the MACD is always calculated around a zero line, what they call the baseline. Okay. And what we're looking for is we're looking for moves in the MACD where we cross over and we stay above. MACD stays above that nine exponential moving average. Now, what's really, really important about the MACD is we want to see a smooth, steady move. What it's trying to do is show you the momentum in the move itself. OK, when the momentum is there and it continues to move. OK. Um, effectively a move up we want to see those moving kind of in parallel with each other okay when we see them drop or diverge from each other see how we've got a little bit of a divergence here between the 9 and the MACD and the sell-off we get kind of separated here that can actually give you an indication of an oversold condition it's moved too far and we can expect maybe a pop back up okay <clears throat> are the MACD lines more accurate than a histogram I am you know the thing is they're 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 virtually identical all right and one of the things that I think is if you use them in combination sometimes that's helpful because what you want to see in the MACD histogram and I'll show you that in just a second. You'll want to see, um, it helps you understand the amplitude of the move. So for example, here, we can see that this separation has widened out here, and that can give us a clue of potential oversold condition. But at the same time, it's really easy to miss that, right? It's really easy, and that's why MACD, MACD requires a lot of attention. You can't, you can't gloss over it, okay? It requires a lot of focus and it requires a very strong discipline to follow it strictly, okay? So those little nuances are very, very important in MACD. So you can see how we separated right here and then we drew back closer. I can almost guarantee in this chart that was either a pullback or a consolidation that occurred in the price action, but we stayed relatively parallel to that nine EMA, which made this a nice momentum move. When we stretch out like we do here, get a little stretched out, and then we start to lose momentum in this area and pull back toward that nine. So. It's a momentum indicator, but it's giving us those little tiny clues to the quality of the momentum, how much momentum is carrying through, following through to the upside, okay? So here's MACD, the very same MACD plotted as what's called a histogram. And a histogram is giving us uh, the same information as this chart. As a matter of fact, it is the exact same chart from here to here. Okay, the histogram removes the um, the crossovers and puts a zero line on the chart. When we cross, when that nine, um, when the MACD crosses back above the nine exponential moving average, we get this green bar. We cross over the way I the way I laid it out here. We cross over, and you can see how the momentum during this period of time in this histogram is growing. Okay, it's growing. That gives you confidence to stay in the trade. You have that momentum working for you. But then at the same time, you can see when that period that I pointed out where we kind of crushed back together a little bit, our momentum kind of faded out. And we probably consolidated in this area in that price action chart. We had a little more of a lift in that move and then 
all of a sudden everything started to fall out of this chart we got started getting a pullback in the price action the macd crosses back over okay the nine period exponential moving average and we start slipping lower and you can see the acceleration in that move and the quality of that momentum as it moves that price lower okay and then we we moved remember if you looked at that macd before we kind of got carried away here right we moved really really far really fast and see how it flattened out right here that flattening out is that loss of momentum down and then we start this recovery that comes back up okay so that's a little bit of an explanation about it and you can see if we get really long in these in these uh, histogram bars it can give us those overbought or oversold conditions and help us identify when we need to be either taking profits in a trade or preventing ourselves from moving into a position that may be a little bit stretched um, to the upside or downside okay so again if we're if we've crossed over the zero line it's indicating a buy if we've crossed down it's indicating a sell or a short in the trade okay here's when we plot them together and you'll see some uh, packages um, trading packages will allow you to plot the two together so you can see them both and um, as you can see it gives us kind of the best of both worlds we get to see when that crossover occurs right here very clearly that crossover occurred here and then the quality of that move as it's moving up and ramping up here and then here's that little resting point where we start losing that momentum a little bit and then pick up right in the end before we fail okay so it gives us a little bit of kind of the, the best of both worlds in the trade so when you're asking your question about accuracy I think working together working them together helps a lot in seeing all the elements that you're supposed to see in uh, the MACD indicator because it helps us identify that momentum and the quality of the momentum um, in that move okay but here's my friendly reminder on MACD um, you don't want to blindly follow MACD and you don't want to blindly follow any indicator. That is a really, really bad idea. Um, you will lose money, lots of money if you do that, okay? I want you to remember one of the most important things about trading and that is price is king. Price is the number one thing. You will never make money from an indicator. You will make money by following the price. Okay, so you want to make sure, even if you use a MACD indicator or that for any other indicator for that matter, is that you learn to follow that indicator but stay focused on the price action. Okay, you want to stay focused on the price action. All right, um, buy sell signals are generated by price, not an indicator. Okay not an indicator there are no buy sell signals that are um, in an indicator okay and moving averages are lagging indicators and macd is a derivative of a moving average so that does not change that fact don't think that macd is going to save your trading okay it can be an aid to your trading but if you're not paying attention to the price action of the chart it will not help you okay so what i'm going to do here that's the end i have no more slides on here what we're going to do is we're going to jump right to some charts and i thought it might be helpful i'm going to move this out of here i thought it might be helpful if i just put macd on here right in front of you and let you see how i set it up now this is tc2000 um, if you guys are looking for a charting package you might want to take a look at tc2000 it is i think hands down the best charting package out there and if you would like to save 25 bucks on it go ahead and click on this link you can save 25 bucks on um, tc2000 um, I, 
do some classes for them and stuff. And, and so they gave me this discount link that anybody can use. Save yourself a little bit of money if you're interested in a good charting package. So here, let's take a look at, uh, we're looking at the diamonds here. Um, and I'm gonna add MACD. So on TC2000, all you have to do is right click on the screen anywhere and say add a plot and, and then just start typing in MACD. And you'll see it'll pop right up here. So I'm going to start with a MACD um, histogram here first. And I'm going to click on that MACD histogram. And actually, I need to move it. There we go. Move it up so you guys can see it. There we go. There's the MACD histogram, the way it, it comes out. And by the way, it comes out of the box pretty much um, like this. This is the standard settings, 1226.9. You can try to play around with those if you want. I just got to tell you, um, the majority of people that use MACD use 1226.9. All right. Now I'm going to change this up just a little bit to make it look a little bit like I did before. I'm going to click on the, the title of the indicator here and just say edit. And I'm going to change this to a green color for the up and make the negative color a, I'm going to, instead of red, I used kind of that dark pink color. We'll do something like that. Let's see if I can change that just a little bit more. Get a little, there we go. A little duller in the price. Okay. So there's my MACD plotted as a histogram. Now you can see if you look at the price action of the diamonds chart, diamonds didn't become a good potential trade until we broke this downtrend here. Okay. We broke the downtrend, pulled back, held it as support, and then we see buyers stepping in here. So even though the MACD crossed over prior to that occurring, our buy signal for the price action didn't occur until a few days later. We need to pay attention to that. It's really, really important, okay, that we're following the price action in conjunction with any indicator okay and you can see how the quality of this move this trend moved up very very strongly and then we can see how it kind of just died the momentum died out and that's in this little consolidating period even in this rally that moved on up you can see we lost momentum in the macd and that is represented in that histogram lost that momentum in that MACD and we've continued as we've moved up in the market here we've continued notice how we're losing momentum in the MACD even as we're rising okay this is one of the things that they call right here a divergence if you take a look at the MACD momentum diverging and the price action of the chart moving up we're starting to lose momentum in the upside move. Doesn't mean we can't keep going up, but we're losing that momentum. So it's a warning signal to be really careful about adding too many long positions up here. It's telling us that we could easily slip negative and start seeing the market sell off or correct in that condition. Does that make sense, guys? It's giving us that clue that momentum is starting to run out. We cannot endless, endlessly buy. Okay, the market is showing us that right here with the MACD. Okay, that we're kind of running out of steam, so to speak, in this. Now, if you look, uh, Manny, yes, I believe um, a naked chart, by the way, this is what I call a naked chart. Notice there's no indicators on this chart. White background chart, black and white candles. Trust me on this, do the research if you want. You will see price patterns so much easier with a white background chart and black and white candles than you will any other chart pattern. I fought that for years and I learned to regret that because it, I wasted a lot of time making really fancy and pretty looking charts, but I wasn't making any money. Okay, so just a simple naked chart like this and following the price action, reading that price action. Now, MACD can help you with that, right? MACD can give you some of those clues, but you've got to be really focused in on MACD. Can you can you tell the nuances in here? 
how important it was that we have been losing momentum in this up move, even though the market is continuing to go up. That's a key clue, right? To be careful, not overextend yourself, even though we went up 400 points at one point today in the Dow, this indicator is telling us the quality of that momentum is dying off. We have to be careful not to add too many long positions. Okay, that a sell off or at least a consolidation is likely due in the in the diamonds it doesn't tell you when that's going to, going to occur. It's not predictive of when that's going to happen. It's just giving us a warning. Okay, it's giving us that clue that something is wrong. Okay, now the same thing is true when we failed this high up here. I want you to notice, and all of the tiny little nuances is what's important. And it's one of those things that people miss most on MACD is they, they think it's just a real easy indicator. Well, if it's green, it's good. If it's, you know, the way I've got it here, if it's green, it's good. It's purple, it's bad. No, that's not true. Not even close to true. And I hate the term signal line. The signal line implies all you gotta do is follow that line and you're good to go. And that's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. When you see this pop up green right here and we cross bullishly, bullishly to the upside and we don't do it until right about here, was that a good place to be buying the market long? We're moving right into price resistance, right? We've already stretched well above where our stop loss could be. We've stretched this up really far and we're running straight into price resistance. It's not a good time to buy. The overall market here is in a downtrend. Okay, so you cannot blindly follow this when this flips over from side to side. However, when it does break down here and then we catch this rally back up, right in here we got the signal that the quality of this trend was starting, downtrend was starting to expand about right here. Okay, right on the failure signal. That was the quality of trend started to expand. And notice that it's really minute. You really have to focus on MACD if you're gonna be successful with MACD. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the MACD lines, okay? I'm just going to add a right click, add a plot. Once again, go to MACD. And I'm going to add the MACD indicator. <clears throat> I gotta move it here. I'm gonna insert it right above the MACD. Okay, and I'm gonna change these. I'm just gonna click and edit these um, so that we kind of match our colors and I'm gonna give those lines just a little bit more weighting so you can see them just a little bit better. Okay, so we've set up the MACD Lines. So you can see we get the crossovers right when the right when the crossover occurs right here, right? It, it's it's telling us the same information, just laying it out in a little bit different manner. And you can see right here where we get that big separation on this move down. That was a warning that we were oversold. Oversold. Notice right here. See how subtle this is? We're seeing in the histogram right here that our momentum to the upside is diminishing, but notice how subtle it is right here. It's very almost not identifiable, okay, that we're starting to fade in our momentum. So we have to combine a good reading of price action in that case, okay? Now, by the way, you can take these two on TC2000 and actually put them together so that they run within the same window. I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to um, right click up here. Whoops, excuse me. I'm going to click right here on this double arrow and say move. And then I'm going to click right here where it says overlay and scale with. Okay, because it's going to scale those two together. And now you have the line MACD and the histogram all together in a chart. 
Okay, works pretty handy when you do that. Okay, so be really careful. Remember, MACD is very subtle. MACD is very, very subtle, and it really requires a significant amount of attention to the detail of what's going on in the price action of that chart to, um, to identify when and where there are good signals in a trade. So let's, let's go to a chart like um, WIN. Um, right way options, we made money on WIN. Okay, where did we enter WIN? Well, we entered WIN, let's pull this back. Here's the break of our downtrend right here. The stock moved up, pulled back, and we entered WIN over in here. Okay, made nice money on WIN. And notice right here in our MACD, our MACD had crossed down here. This was the sign, what they con consider to be the trigger. All right, now could you have purchased that? Certainly, you know, you can gamble on anything. All right, but was that a good entry signal? Well, what I consider to be a good entry signal on a trade is when we have an opportunity for a low risk entry, and that means stock has moved up and then pulled back testing support, and then buyer stepping in. It gives us a low risk entry where our stop loss is close. This is not a close entry. First, we have a great big giant candle and our real price support is showing up down here, meaning I have to take a large risk in that trade to put that position on. I don't like those kind of trades because what if this runs up into here and just turns around and fails? Okay, can that happen? We've all seen that happen, right? So we wanna be careful with the price action, pay attention to the price action of the chart. Where's a good safe entry into the trade? That safe entry occurs, or safer entry, when we break through this resistance. By the way, right there was that pink line. Anytime you see a pink line on my charts, that was an alert that I set on the charts. Stock crosses above that level. My stop loss, I can enter here. My stop loss is right underneath there. I have a very low risk in the trade. Not only that, this right here is the very first evidence of trend. Up until that point, we had no evidence of trend. How do we get a trend? We make a higher low. Stock moves up, holds, and moves up. This right here is the first evidence, the beginning of the trend. Okay, so it gives me that clue. Now, if we look at MACD right here, I want you to notice that MACD at that time was actually starting to show us that diminishment in the quality of trend. All right, but notice how well this stock continued to perform. This was one of the troubles I had with MACD thinking that it was just all or nothing in the trade. Um, MACD was, uh, you know, MACD was up, so I had to have a winning trade. That's not true. And notice how we move up, pull back in that position. But if you look at these lines right here and see where our pink line, our nine moving average, and our MACD line are staying relatively parallel, even though the momentum expansion has started to slow, our, our trend is still working for us here in the trade. Notice how this area right down here had very big bars, explosion of uh, volatility in the price action. Notice how right up here, our price action becomes very deliberate. This is the area that I wanna trade, okay? This is the area where I wanna be entering long positions, where the price action is very deliberate the stock is moving in a very concise manner, okay? Rather than this explosion of volatility that we know can flip, flip and go the other direction really, really quick, right? All right, so for example, right here where we cross over, we turn green on MACD and notice it stayed green even though we collapsed here in price, rallied up, continued to move down, is this a good place to be entering a long trade? I hope you're saying, well, not just no, but 
Heck no, that's not where I want to be entering a trade, right? The stock is still downtrending. There's no clue of evidence of an uptrend yet, yet MACD is signaling an entry signal. How would you like to have entered on that big explosive move right here when we crossed over? Enter that trade. Set through this little rest in here thinking everything is fine and then wake up the next day and we're down here. Kind of a painful lesson, right? So we want to wait for that price action to show itself to be clean and deliberate before we jump into a trade. Is that making sense, guys? Making sense, I hope. Awesome. Awesome. I want to go back here and I want to show you a couple of other things here. I'm going to go back to that diamonds chart and I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Okay. And what, take a look at the chart right here where we kind of um, we were moving up right in this area. This is another one of those subtle things of MACD, and I'm going to stretch this up so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, right during this period of time, the diamonds was moving up. Notice that the MACD was diverging down. MACD right here was giving us a clue of this potential failure in the market. Price was going up, MACD was not supporting that move and we started to get that rapid decline that came in here and we really fell off the cliff okay so keep those in mind we want to look for those little subtle differences in the price action of the chart that gives us those clues that we could be running into trouble okay it's giving us that little tiny clue of what's going on in the price action of the chart but once again, can you see how very detailed you have to look at MACD to make it useful? I mean, you really have to focus on the details. And if you don't combine price action with MACD, you might as well just do me a favor. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, if, if that's what you think, that you can just start trading MACD when you see the crossover here and going long and going short, do me a favor, write me a check for half of your account just send it to me, Doug Campbell, here in Broken Bone, Nebraska, and at least you'll know who took half of your money, and I'll make sure and send you a Christmas card. And I would expect one back from you because I saved you half of your money. If you don't use price action and, and regulate how you trade based on what the price of the chart is doing and just blindly follow an indicator. That's what's gonna to happen to you. Okay? Um, Earl, I would recommend you watch some of the videos that I have. That's not the subject here tonight, but um, what I would do is watch um, a bunch of the videos. Anyone here not been to my YouTube channel? Would you guys do me a favor? I'm not gonna ask you to spend a single dime here tonight. I'm not gonna sell you on anything. What I do want you to do is if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go over there, click that subscribe button on YouTube and click the thumbs up button, okay? Click that thumbs up button on all of these videos that I post in there. And if you look in the playlist, there's a tab that says playlist. If you look in the playlist, there's an area called public education. And there's a whole lot of information in there about price action trading. Okay, building a trading plan, doing all of those kind of things. As a matter of fact, there's over 450 videos now on YouTube that I've placed there. So there's tons and tons of information. Okay, so please go over there and subscribe. All of this information is free. Okay, I share it completely. Okay, let's take a look at something else. Let's look at like, um, uh, well, we can pick anything. Um, let's go to JCPenney here. 
I don't know why I picked J.C. Penney. Probably because I watched it or saw it a couple times today. Has a nice little um, inverted head and shoulders pattern starting to form here um, um, on the chart. Still hasn't broke its downtrend in this trade. So I think this is one of those really good examples to pay attention here that even though we've crossed over green, is there any reason to buy this yet? Probably not, right? Probably no reason to buy that chart yet. We don't have really good signals here yet and we still haven't broke the major downtrend in the stock. Okay, I wanna show you right here though, I just, just picked this up, just notice this. See how we made a new high here in price? Okay, but if we look at the MACD right here, when we made that new high in price, the MACD was diminishing. That was a clue. That was a clue of a problem. Okay, price was diverging from MACD. That was our indication that we had an issue in the chart that we needed to be paying attention to. Uh, BA, sure, let's take a look at BA with the MACD on here, see what we can see. By the way, tonight is not about necessarily finding you trades or anything like that. It's about teaching you the importance of following price action. If you do use an indicator, make sure you use it in conjunction with good price action um, skills here. Okay, so let's take a look at first the price action of the chart. You can see clearly I've got this defined already. There's my downtrend. And until price crosses over that downtrend, I'm not interested. I don't care what MACD says until we get past that downtrend. I am not interested. I use a statement all the time in, in right way options. How many times does it have to fail at this line before we believe it's true? So until price action can prove that we can break above there and hold it as support, I'm not interested in the chart. Not even a little bit. Okay? Because I did that for years and years and years and found myself catching these patterns right here over and over. Price moves up, oh, it's gotta go up from here, it's Boeing, wrong. And I get stopped out, lose a bunch of money on the trade. Okay, nothing that I do has anything to do with predicting the direction of the market. I simply want to follow the price action of the chart. When the price action starts to prove to me that we're in a bullish mode, I wanna wait for the good entry signal, enter that trade with a low risk on the position, a place that I can defend this trade, and take the position on. So we move up through here, and notice what we did. We just did this nice little sidestepping consolidation right here. Once I put that drawing on there, can you guys see how easy it is to see the buy signal? It just pops up there, right? That's our entry into the trade. I want you to look at MACD. MACD is already showing a diminishment in the momentum. And notice how small that momentum becomes. And all we did is consolidate over to the trend. That's all we did, it's moved over to the trend. We rested and then we had that move away, started moving back up in that pattern, gapped up on earnings or something that, that occurred here and it's still holding up. Now notice right here, we're starting to see as we pr approach these highs up here, we're reaching that place where momentum is starting to fade here a little bit. Could it be just another fade over to trend and then continue higher? Yes, it could. Could definitely do that. By the way, there's another divergence in this chart. I don't know if you guys saw it. The divergence is right here. Boeing made a new low, MACD did not. little tiny divergence like that is extremely important in the trading in the chart okay
let's take a look at URI. URI. Okay, be Chris asked about URI. Can you see what's going on in URI? Stock is poking up here. Look what's happening to our MACD. Is MACD giving us a clue that our momentum is fading here? Big time. As a matter of fact, it's almost trying to cross down. We need this to continue to move on up and expand this back up because we're really close to that potential failure point. So where was the best entry here in MACD? The best entry was after we broke that downtrend. Let me pull this back just a little bit further. We break the downtrend. We rally above this price resistance, hold it as support, and enter this trade somewhere in here where our stop loss is close. We still had this pullback here, but it held, and we moved on up in the pattern, winning potential trade. Now is not probably the best time to enter URI, and you can actually see that in the chart if you mark out the resistance. Right there's price resistance. MACD is giving us a clue we may be running into that resistance. We may be challenged right here by the price action, and it's giving us that clue. Okay? So keep an eye on that because MAC, or URI could really be having a little bit of um, evidence here that we may run into a resistance and could fail or at least consolidate, okay? Because our momentum is dying in the move, okay? Uh, B. Chris, I'm going to recommend to you, I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, President says we're going to go through this great big revitalization of, of um, infrastructure. We're going to spend all of this money. Just know that when they decide they're going to do that, it may be four years down the road before they actually complete any plan to what they're going to do on any infrastructure improvements, how much money they're going to spend. It may be years down the road. So don't sell yourself or convince yourself a trade is a great trade before you take a look at the price action of the chart. The price action of the chart is giving us a clue, a clue that we need to pay attention to. Okay. Make sense? I hope so. I hope so. Let's take a look at a chart like Shop. Shopify, big run up. Big run up. MACD crosses over right here. Looking good. MACD crosses over. Big pump up move. Everybody says we should buy MACD. Is that a good place to enter? the chart well I gotta be honest that's not a bad place to enter that trade even though this chart is still overall downtrending notice this channel that we're in in this chart okay and what's the importance of this point right here MACD is telling us we moved up we pulled back and buyer stepped in here this is the first evidence of an uptrend right here so there is a potential trade in here up to this point. When we reach this point up here, we have to be really, really careful in that trade. Even though our momentum is showing that expansion through here, we have to be careful as we approach that resistance. Because once again, how many times does it have to fail here before we believe it's true? Okay, so there is a good trade in here relatively low risk entry price is still pretty volatile in here and the best entry into this trade if you ask me is right up here once we break the downtrend price pulls back holds as support buyers start stepping into this stock that is the best low risk entry in this trade notice how the price action here has become much more concise than down here I take less risk on the trade 
here than I do here. That makes sense. Now one more time, we made a new low here. Notice that new low. What happened here on our MACD? Our MACD gave us a divergence right here. We were moving down in price. Our MACD gave us a divergence higher. Okay, it's those little subtle clues that you have to be very focused on in your charting with MACD. All right, and that's where people really tend to mess up because it requires so much attention to the detail. And if you don't couple it with price action, you are a dead duck. You're just going to lose money. Okay. All right, any questions on this? Any questions on MACD or a chart that you want to look at? Just let me know. Um, hopefully you've kind of gotten a picture of what MACD is and, and understand that there's no, there should be no mystique around MACD. Okay? There should be no, um, nothing in there that says, oh my gosh, this is just too old. You know, MACD is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It, that is not true is just absolutely not true. If you don't couple it with the price action of the chart and really focus in on the price action of the chart, MACD will take your money away really, really fast. Okay. Um, MYL, let's take a look at MYL. MYL, nice price action here, break of that downtrend, okay. Nice break of that downtrend, nice upward trend going on in the chart. Notice how we pushed through this level of resistance right here, held it as support. And we moved back over to the trend. Notice how I drew this line here. Stupid tools change their color and everything automatically here. We moved right here is where we first gained our uptrend, our possible uptrend because we held our downtrend as support, okay? We held on here and buyers stepped in. So that was the first evidence, an evidence of uptrend. Notice how when we moved up here, this is important guys, pay attention to this. A stock will most often come back to its trend. So when you see that big candle right there and you chase into that trade, you're likely going to get stuck in a move that either pulls back or goes sideways for a long period of time because it's going to move back over to its trend before you get that quality move. Very big price action clue there. Stocks like to come back to their trend. Okay, so once that, a trend, that trend is established, make sure you're paying attention to that trend. If you jump too soon, you have to sit through, nothing wrong with jumping too soon on this, just you have to sit here for a couple of weeks while that goes nowhere. Because you went early on the trade. It didn't, didn't cost you anything, but you went early on the trade. All right. RSI is another one of those, and I can do a class on RSI. It's another one of those, and people combine it with MACD and think it is the it is the bomb. It is the only thing that you need to make money in the market. And I'm going to tell you, that's absolutely wrong. If you clutter up your chart with too many indicators, you're going to run into all kinds of places in those charts where you have contradictions and you watch that trade that could have potentially made money, but you had too many contradictions in your indicators and you didn't take the trade. You become paralyzed with over analysis of the chart. And what happens is, I don't know why we do this as traders, but we put so much junk on our charts and then we, all our eyes do is come to this and we forget to pay attention to the price action of the chart. If there's one thing you could learn from me that I'd hope you'd pick up, it's what Jim just put there. Price is king. Price 
is king. If you learn to follow price and use the indicators to help you in confirming what you're seeing in price action, you've got a combination that will work. If you overuse indicators and fail to follow price action, you will lose money. Okay. Volume. Volume is very difficult to follow, Jim, unless you use it in a different way. Um, that's not what we're going to talk about here tonight, but I almost never look at volume. Unless I get extreme volume moves, almost never look at it. What's more important to me is what price is doing, because I'm only going to make money if price moves. Okay. Well, Strand, remember, <laughs> um, why does a divergence happen? It's, it's the math of the indicator. What's the indicator's math? We're subtracting the 26 EMA from the 12 EMA. Uh, uh, that's all. Why does it diverge? Because the price action overextends in one direction and that MACD is going, uh, you know, we all know that the market overdoes these moves, right? Emotion gets in the way of the market and we overshoot to the downside and we overshoot to the upside all the time. MACD can help us identify those moves, okay? But please understand, it's very subtle. You have to be really on top of it to see those moves. Okay. What EMA, what EMAs? Oh, right here, MACD tells you that. It's the 12 exponential moving average. And we subtract the 26 exponential moving average from the 12 exponential moving average. That's what creates the MACD line. The MACD green line here is the 12 exponential moving average subtracted from the 26. That creates MACD. Okay. If you change these numbers, if you put a, a 10 and, you know, 14 there, it's subtracting the 14 from the 10. That gives you the MACD line. Okay. Nike. NKE. Nike. Nice, nice move here. You can see my price alert on the chart. This is my price alert for the entry. And I want you to notice that MACD, what we did here is we waited for the price to cross the downtrend. Price moved up, held the downtrend as support. And then we get that buy signal right here. Look at straight down here at MACD. We had our elevation that moved us through, held the support, started to diminish, and then rallied back up. Notice that our momentum is dying out of this in a big way. And why should it not be? Because we're running right into price resistance highs. Okay, our momentum is fading in the chart. Okay, cool stuff. So I won't have time to go over all your charts tonight, guys. Um, just understand, um, SS... SSTI, let's take a look at SSTI. SSTI showing a buy signal, but what do you see in MACD? We're starting to see that divergence right here at the top, right? We've pushed up, and if we mark out this chart, we're pushing into a price resistance right here in the chart. We're pushing that price resistance and our momentum is dropping out. Okay. Now, what this means doesn't mean that the stock has to fall, right? Doesn't mean the stock has to fall. What it could do is just consolidate here. Move over to its trend. 
and then re-engage. Okay. So even though MACD is giving you that signal, it doesn't necessarily mean this is going to occur like it did here. It's showing us caution that we maybe we look, ought to look at the chart a little bit more closely and identify that we're running into price resistance. Okay. Netflix. Netflix, nice little wedge pattern here popping up. Notice what's happening to our MACD here. Sheesh, right? Doggone it. Our MACD is not performing for us. What's going on in the price action of this chart? Well, let's draw a couple lines. Are we still in a downtrend? Or are we testing price resistance? Yes, we are. We're right there at a conjunction of a price resistance of a potential downtrend. You can see my line right across here where I pick up a bunch of those highs. A strong potential resistance area in the chart. MACD is fading. Okay, so you have to be careful with that trade. You have to watch and respect those price action levels. Okay, very, very important. Last one, J&J. &J. Good old Johnson and Johnson. Look what's going on here in J&J. &J. We're pushing this resistance level in the chart. Nice buy signal today. Move right off of this trend or really, really close to that trend anyway. Notice that our MACD is moving up. Staying pretty good and look real subtly here. We had a little bit of extension of the momentum here in the chart. But also kind of keep in mind that pushing against this resistance, we could see this pop through, consolidate back to trend. We could see this stop right here, consolidate over to trend. Just like it did here, pop, consolidate all the way over to trend. It happens all the time. And by the way, these downtrends, can be short term like this. Notice the same price action is true. You drop the chart, pops through, consolidates over here to the trend, and then buyers step in. Isn't that cool? If you just learn to read the price action of the chart, the price is giving us almost everything we need. But if you need a confirmation, MACD might be able to do that for you if you like that indicator. And it's just one of those things I had a lot of comments and questions on. Can you do something on MACD? So, so now I've done that and hopefully I've kind of demystified MACD a little bit for you. It requires a lot of attention to detail. Okay, a lot of attention to detail, but you can see it does give you some clues if you use it properly and do not use it as a buy sell signal. Okay. Jim, thank you very much. Everyone, I want to thank you for being here tonight. And once again, I want to ask you if you could do me a favor. You know, I'm not selling anything here, not asking you to do anything, except if you could go over there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate that. I put out information like this all the time. And please do me a favor, share that YouTube channel with all your friends and family that are traders. Um, there, there's good information there and I'm not bragging or anything. There's just good quality information there and it doesn't cost you anything. You know, I, I say this all the time. I think YouTube is like, um, it's like a free university. If you find someone that you can learn from and trust, that information is there and you can learn how to become a better trader by watching carefully what, what people put out. So please take your time, um, go through, there's a lot of information there. And if you have questions, if there's a, something that um, you would like to see me do a video on, by the way guys, I, I've been doing this for just about 30 years now. Just about 30 years, 14 of those years full time. Okay, I've put two kids through college from trading profits. Or 
All right, so I have some experience at this and, and I want you to understand something else. I'm not some fancy educated guy. I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I'm a carpenter. Okay, I build houses for a living. So trust me when I say this, if I can do it, you can do it. Believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, really study price action. Get a simple chart and study that price action. If you become a student of price, toss in an indicator or two, you can be very successful in trading. I truly believe that anybody can do it, okay? So thanks for being here tonight. I don't want to waste your time or anything. I really do appreciate you guys being here. I hope you got something out of this tonight. Hope it was meaningful to you. Um, gave you some clues um, on price action, some clues on how MACD might be useful to you or how it might not be useful to you. Oh, Tex, you're very, very kind. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Please make sure to subscribe to that YouTube channel. I truly appreciate it. Okay, everyone take care. We will talk to you very, very soon. And I want to thank you all very much for taking the time. Everyone have a great evening. How about we listen to a little tune as we move on into the close? I always like to listen to a little music. And so how about, this is gonna be a, a good tune and it's very, very appropriate for us, Taking Care of Business by Bachman Turner Overdrive. Everyone take care, have a great evening.